Welcome to the Raw and Uncensored Ambitious Podcast. During our time here together, I will be instilling all of the strength, power, and determination you will need to use the very stones thrown at you to build your ultimate empire. We will redefine the word bitch from the derogatory to the acronym being in total control of herself. So let's adjust our crowns and prepare to live life ambitiously. Oh, yeah, here I am, the original HBIC, Katie motherfucking Boyd. And on this week's installment of the Ambitious Podcast, I'm going to start rolling out the guests that have helped me level up in the last year, who have given me incredible service, and they have just done so much for me becoming more and more ambitious that I want to share these people with the world. And the first person is my physical therapist, Samantha Zimmerman. Samantha is a doctor of physical therapy who has practiced in the field for over a decade. After serving six years in the U.S. Navy, culminating in work with the Special Operations Community, she completed specialized postgraduate training to become a certified pelvic floor physical therapist. Sammy has a unique background. She's also board certified in sports and orthopedic physical therapy and certified as a strength coach. So she blends these practice areas to customize recovery to the absolute highest levels. In 2023, Sammy founded Elite Care Physical Therapy in order to provide a customized high-end experience treating the whole person rather than just a diagnosis. This allows her to break the mold of traditional cookie-cutter PT and help her patients rediscover their strength. It was such an awesome day having Samantha come to the podcast studio. Sammy is actually local to Wyndham, New Hampshire, and I adore her. A couple of years ago, and I get into this a little bit in the podcast, a couple of years ago, I hurt my foot. Something happened with my plantar fascia. We don't exactly know perfectly what it was, but I was like in a walking boot. I was like a hot mess express. And I was like, no one can fix this. It'll never, it was so much pain. I I can't even explain it. And I found Samantha through my really good friends, the Gallagher's. And she literally, when I tell you, she changed my life. I had never had that kind of care from anybody, not even like a doctor up until recently. And she just changed my life. She healed me. So as I get into on the podcast, I hurt my back in 2004 and I've had this like lingering back pain thing going on. And I went to her for my back pain and it ended up being something I never even thought possible. It ended up being a pelvic floor issue. We're going to get really deep down, raw, real, and dirty in this podcast. And I think for a lot of you women out there who deal with lower back pain, hip pain, um, bad periods, a plethora of things pain-wise, you're going to listen to this podcast and you're going to have these aha moments where you're like, holy shit, I may have a pelvic floor problem. And Sammy is just freaking she's a genius, dude. Like that's all I have to say. I had so much fun with her on the podcast. I know you guys are going to absolutely love it. And what's even better is on February 24th, that's a Saturday, we're going to be having a pelvic floor workshop at her new studio that she recently opened. And it's going to be uh, live. So you can actually attend live. So if that's something that you'd like to do, if you're in the Southern New Hampshire, Massachusetts, New England area, I would love to have you. It's totally free. She's going to teach you all about pelvic floor. And if you fall in love with her like I did, you can hire her. She does virtual. She does in-house. She's absolutely incredible. But what's also really cool is because, you know, like modernity, here we are. I'm going to also be streaming this live on my Ambitious app for all of you women out there that, you know, they live too far away because I have ambitious women from all across the globe. So if this is something that you're interested in, can you just reach out to me at help at kbmfc.com so we can get you hooked up either in person 
or for the virtual workshop. You can also find Sammy by following her on Instagram at the Elite Care PT. All these things are going to be in the show notes. So without much further ado, I want you to listen to the genius that is Samantha Zimmerman, my pelvic floor PT. Sam, I am so freaking grateful for you being on the Bitches Podcast because you are going to change our listeners' lives forever and ever. Amen. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so a little backstory on the Samantha Files. (laughs) I hurt myself really bad because I'm a fucking klutz. And I don't know, we didn't really ever figure out what was truly wrong with my foot, but it was more fucked up than a soup sandwich. (laughs) (laughs) And you (laughs) totally healed me. I know that you say I'm also a very good client and I will do the homework, but it was honestly 90% you. So I just want to let you know that. So Sam helped me about three years ago when I did something jacked up to my foot and I fell in love with her, not only as a PT, but you're just, you're a fucking girl's girl. You're like my person. Yeah, I like vibe with you. Like it's wild. So about six months ago, I started getting to a place in my life where I was like, you know, I really want to like take care of myself on a different level. And for the last 20 years, I have battled with extreme, sometimes more than others. But when I was a little bit younger, it was really bad before I had a nerve block. And I had battled with extreme lower back pain. And, you know, you go to all the doctors and they give you the x-rays and the MRIs and all that stuff. And they just tell you, you have degenerative disc disease and you're just getting old, you're just getting old. And I am the type of person which, you know, I will not fucking listen to that. Like that is not something that I'm allowing into my body. So about six months ago, I said, you know, if Sam freaking helped my foot, she can fucking help my back. So I reached out to Samantha and we started doing PT again on our first meeting. This is just how Kismet works. On our first meeting, we sat down, you did our intake and we were talking about, you know, my back pain on a scale of one to 10, all those questions that you ask. And then she was being a nosy little bitch. (laughs) And she asked me, do you have painful sex? And I was like, well, my husband is black. So yes, I do. <laughs> to which I replied, doesn't have to be painful. And I was like, say what? And then she went on to tell me that this can be an issue with the pelvic floor. And I was like, honey, my pelvic floor is high and tight. I've been working on that thing since the Reagan administration. <laughs> I do my Kegels. I do my Yoni egg. No I do, leaking. I don't leak. I don't do any of the things. And you were like, mm, yeah, well, I'm going to, I'm going to twist your world upside down. And she did. And so we ended up doing our first pelvic floor session. I was not nervous because you know me, I don't give a shit. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a modest lady, as you know, but I just thought it was so crazy because I never thought in a million years that by you actually doing something internally to someone that it could heal them on such an incredible level. And within, I would say, three to four sessions, I was like a totally different human. We just did a a session about a week ago. And you asked me how I was feeling. And I was like, literally everything that we have worked on is gone. And we're going to talk all about what those things are. And then we're also going to talk deeply about what having pelvic floor problems are and how you can fix them and what to do and what not to do and the misconceptions and the medical gaslighting that goes on and all of that happy horse shit. So I'm really excited to get this party started. Yeah. So let's talk first about how you got involved in this industry because not many PTs do this. It's pretty uncommon. Um, so right now the PT degree, it's a doctorate degree. So we do undergrad and then we do three years of graduate training. So by the time you get out of that, unless you're already thinking, I want to be a pelvic floor specialist, the last thing a lot of people want to do is put a lot more money and a lot more time into training. So my thought was always I wanted to be an orthopedic and a sports physical therapist. I wanted to work with the Red Sox. I wanted to work with sports teams, whoever. Um, I worked on my brother during school and my brother is a was a naval aviator and he was going through like survival training. So he had hurt himself and I was just kind of helping him out. And I was like, whoa, this is super rewarding. I really like working with somebody who's then going to go and, you know, do something cool. So I joined the military. I was stationed in California. I was stationed in DC, Quantico area, and then down in North Carolina. And during that time, I was also deployed over to Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Um, 
During that time, I started noticing a lot of my male patients having testicular pain. So many of them in the infantry and the special operations community were dealing with just really chronic, really severe pain to the extent where some of them were getting surgical removal of the testicle. Dude, when she told me this, I was like, say that again, please, for the people in the back. Surgical removal of the testicle. So like these young, handsome, year old amazing men, G.I. Joe, animals, mm-hmm. they're like, I have to, you have to cut it's so bad. my balls you off. You have to cut it off. I feel like I'm getting kicked every day of my life. That, may, that like literally knocks the wind out of me. And the first time as a PT, the first time I saw that on my schedule, I was like, what? You're like, balls? <laughs> Excuse, Excuse me? <laughs> Do I need a private room? So wow. I started treating their backs and their inner thighs and doing certain stretches that really helped a lot. So these poor guys with now chronic ghost pain because I don't even have a testicle right. It's like losing an arm, but it's a ball. Exactly. So you're like, it's not there anymore, but I can still feel exactly. the pain. That's so wild. Miserable. And it was getting better for them. It was really helping them. So fast forward a few more years, I got out of the military. I'm now working just off base as a contractor, but I'm working with the wives of Marines and Marines and special operations people, and et cetera. And uh, the place that I worked paid for me to go to all of the pelvic floor classes. So male pelvic floor, female pelvic floor. So before I was treating the testicular pain, but I wasn't doing anything internal. Mm. Now I'm qualified to do internal exams, work on these muscles that standard PTs, even though we have a doctorate level, we have no access to all of these muscles on the inside of the pelvis. Yeah. So it became this whole new world of, you know, that was just the beginning. That was like, you know, you're unpeeling the different layers of the onion because you don't realize how many people around you are dealing with dysfunction. Because no one talks about it. Nobody talks about it. It has a stigma, especially as like a manly man talking about like my balls hurt. Like no one cares, dude. I can deadlift 500 pounds, but I feel like I'm getting kicked in the junk. (laughs) Shit. Yeah. That's insane to me. And when you started doing like the internal stuff on these guys in the military, did you start to see them change and get better like almost instantaneously? Yeah. I have one in my memory right now. He got so much better, but uh, the Valsalva that like hold your breath, get the heavy weight up can be really troublesome for the pelvic floor. And he was like, you know what? I'm competing. I'll just come to you once a week. Wow. <laughs> He's like, I know that's going to make it hurt, but as long as I can come see Was you. he a bodybuilder? Or was yeah. he a powerlifter? He was competing. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> and you totally changed his life. Yeah. So as long as he had access to come see me, he was comfortable lifting really heavy wow. and just going for it. And then when did you kind of transition more into working with the females? So that was, I did a lot of it then because I was working with the Marines wives as well. But when I got back up here to New Hampshire, that's when my caseload became primarily women. Wow. There aren't, I think maybe the urologists around here maybe don't understand that men can get it too, or maybe it's just not as common Mm -hmm. in the civilian population. But now the past three years, I've been working primarily with women um, of all ages and all activity levels. Because I think another misconception is when you have something wrong with your pelvic floor, you're in your 50s, your 60s, you've already had your babies, everything is just drooping and dropping, and then you're medically gaslit by the doctors just saying what? It's normal. This is just your age. Yep. Just getting old. Yep. And what do you say about that? I think it's terrible. I think these doctors are really doing a disservice to people who are coming to them for help. They're saying, this isn't what I want my life to be. And the doctors are saying, Sorry, that's what your life is, and you just have to live like this. And no one should. Yeah, and, and we I don't have to. Saying all the time, it doesn't have to be this way. I say this to my patients all the time: that yeah, you leak, yeah, you have pain, it, you can't run, you can't jump, you can't do your exercises. If you have kids, you can't play with them. It doesn't have to be this way. Wow. Yeah. I, and me being in the health and wellness industry, focusing mostly on women for all of my career. I can't tell you how many women like back in the day when we were doing like crazy high intensity interval training boot camps every day, they would like hold themselves when I would make them do like star jumps and shit. And I would be like, what the fuck is wrong with you, Pamela? And she's like, well, you haven't had babies and you don't know. And I would be like, shut the fuck up. Stop being a pussy. <laughs> you know me like, that's how I skip it. Right. They just don't do it. And well, I would say, why don't you do hill climbers instead? Yep. Yep. <laughs> and then you're not getting... A, you're calling attention to yourself, which yes, is embarrassing. Yes. But B, you're spending all this money on getting fit and spending all your time and putting yourself out there to improve your life, but you're not getting the most you can out of it because you're skipping half of the things. But don't you think it's also because people just have been told like, this is just what you have, yep. to, how you have to live this and just like suck it, it up. Yeah, exactly. I We were talking before because we actually did a live before we came on this podcast with the girls on my app. And you were talking about, which I thought was so interesting about how you feel that the men talk a little bit about how the t- the tucking the tail tucking mm, thing the I vestigial could, re- yeah because I've been doing a lot of shadow work with my girls on the app around shame mm-hmm. 
And I think that shame is this like overlooked thing that we go through that we're just like, oh, it's just, you know, who cares? And it's like, shame can shape every part of your life. Absolutely. Especially like uh, from a metaphysical, like, you know, putting pain in certain places and it gets stuck there and then you have all these problems. So talk a little bit about the shame aspect with yeah. these guys in boot camp. I just thought it was so yeah. interesting. So when I first started working with internal men, when I first started working internally with my men, uh, I love that. It sounds so good. Really... You need to put that on t-shirt. <laughs> oh man. Um, so it needs to be your tagline. <laughs> Pop that on the website. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So I was concerned and confused as to why I was seeing so many, you know, 18 to 22 year old men with testicular pain. It was like crazy. You know, I'd lived at this point, I'm like almost 30 years old. I'm like, does every 20 year old guy feel this way? What is happening? And so I looked into it. I went to some courses on it and we figured that we have this tail tucking reflex where we used to have tails. We've evolved, but this reflex when we feel shame is to tuck your tail just like a dog. Um, and these muscles that would control that are the muscles of your pelvic floor. So right out of boot camp, these guys who've just come out of, you know, 10 weeks of getting yelled at, 13 weeks of getting yelled at, all of a sudden they have this new pain. And it's not just men. It was just the men that made me realize this because that's what, where I was treating at the time. But women who've had trauma, people who've been really stressed out or felt like they're in this fight or flight for years yes. end up with the same tail tucking situation. And you can even see it. Sometimes I'll 100%. look while people are filling out their paperwork and standing and you they're all curled in on themselves. Their tails are all tucked under. Wow. It's crazy. It's it's wild that you're saying that because it's bringing up like, of course, you know, because I'm just a wild bitch and I have flashbacks constantly. Always. We'll talk about that. <laughs> like a movie. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> when I, for, I never had back pain in my life and I got into a really bad car accident in 2004 where there was, I was on a three lane highway and this guy was like weaving in and out of traffic and I kept seeing him behind me. Like, what the hell is this guy doing? Oh, so it was I was like, just the accident. Mm-hmm. So I saw this happen and then he, he was in the fast lane and he hit the car in the middle lane and then the middle lane car hit me. So you saw it all happen. Mm-hmm. So and you're it, stressed. Yes. And it sent me into like the side, like a ditch on the side of the road. And I was hanging by my throat, by my, um, my uh, seatbelt. Oh my God. Yep. So it, what happened to me was it broke like 30 to 40% of my vocal cords because it broke my thyroid cartilage. And that's where you got that sexy voice. Though. I know. I'm really, <laughs> I mean, this is not my voice. It's the craziest thing. Like if you watch videos of me before the car accident, I had a totally different voice. It's, it's actually wild. But what, what happened is the next day I was getting ready for a pageant and I was with this like tool bag asshole bodybuilder. The next day. The next day. This is fucking, this is how fucked up. And this is like how. Hanging by my neck. Yes. Anyway, the next day. The next day. So this happens to me. The next day I could literally taste blood in my throat, like the whole nine yards. I was all fucked up. And I was with this guy who was a professional bodybuilder. He was my coach and he was also my boyfriend. And he was just a tool bag, really super abusive. And he said to me, he's like, you can't skip a day. Like you have to go deadlift today. Swear to God, this is a true story. I know. Trauma. Hashtag trauma. (laughs) So I was like, fuck, like, okay, I'm just going to go deadlift. So I started deadlifting, put 45 pounds on each side, just deadlifting for like 15 reps, like just warming up my body, whatever. Put another two plates on. Okay. Going three plates on each side. Get out. Yeah. And so I remember, I'll never forget this as long as I lived. I was doing a reverse grip sumo style deadlift. I go to pull up to do like the full explosion and I just felt my lower back like snap. Like it almost felt like a something unwound and just snapped. And I had to, this is no word of a lie. You can ask my mom. I had to crawl from the deadlifting platform into my car to the hospital. Where was your boyfriend? Um, he wasn't there. He, he was asked. like, yeah, he was working Perfect. somewhere else that day. Perfect. Um, yeah. <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> and so my mom, I went to the doctor, I went to the hospital, I went to the emergency room and they were just like, oh, you just have like, have sci- extreme sciatica. They That's gave me favorite. muscle relaxers. Favorite thing to say. I was like Lucy in the sky with diamonds. I had like never taken anything like that in my life. They gave me like perks and muscle relaxers. Those were the good old days. Yeah. They would actually like give you meds. <laughs> right. And so I remember like being so fucked up now at, cause I worked with you so long. I know a lot more about the body. I was f- working out with this fucked up body, yeah. right? So then I was training my body to be all curved and all whacked out, Reinforcing right? Forcing those bad patterns that you were getting into from the stress and the injury. Right. And that was 2004. 
So now it's we're going into 2020. Well, we are in 2024 when this podcast comes out. Yeah. And we're going into 2024. So that's 20 years of all that pain, all that trauma, pushing it down. Even sometimes like when I deadlift, it like makes me feel emotional because it like triggers like that day. Oh my gosh. And I never realized I it. Still well. And I I haven't deadlifted in like a couple of weeks, but I think it would. <laughs> Working out actually triggers yeah. me. So I have to like do different things and I have I to like get stored in there though. But that's what I'm saying sense. because it's crazy since I started working with you. I know we're going off on a tangent, but <laughs> when I started working with you recently, I've wanted to work out more because it's, I think it's removing a mm-hmm. lot of that, tra- that trauma. Right. So from that day, as you know, I've had, um, nerve blocks. I've gone to like every fucking doctor, PT, up the yin yang, chiropractic work, whatever. I've been working with you for three months and I have no fucking pain. And we haven't done much on your back. I know. (laughs) Everything has been pelvic floor. But I was thinking about what you were saying. And this is what kind of made me think about when I did get this back pain situation is the guy that was like, you know, bodybuilding and having all this pain and it like triggered that. Oh my God, this is when it all happened. Yeah. And so do you believe that we store trauma in certain parts of our body? Absolutely. And I don't know any, you know, source or book that says that, but I know with what I do, there's actually a book. I'll give it to you. Oh, perfect. Is yeah, it the body called, keeps the score? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I should read that. It's a really great book. Yeah. yeah. So anecdotally, what I do in my private room as I'm doing muscle release in this part of the body, people really store a lot of trauma there. And whenever I see a patient for internal work, I always start by asking if there's any history of sexual abuse because things come up while Mm -hmm. I'm in there. It's, it's just, it's part of our body that we keep private and we keep contained and it can be really scary and triggering for people. Right. So I'll have people crying on the table and I'll have people remembering things on the table. Oh yeah. I have lots of little memories. (laughs) Yeah. So it pops up and it's just these certain muscles that we have no access to. So I've talked a lot about this with people that have had 30 years of pain, 20 years of pain, you know, if you guys listen to Katie regularly, you know she's stretching, she's rolling, she's doing all the things she's doing. She she lives self care. She lives the example that she's setting. We can't reach these muscles oftentimes on our own. So these muscles, it's not just like stretching your quad and being like, okay, let it go. You, you have to see a professional or do certain techniques to get rid of this stuff yourself. Mm-hmm. It's really hard when you see patients and they come in for different ailments and you start to proverbially sell them this pelvic floor therapy, what are some of the questions that you ask them to kind of see if this is an avenue that they want to go down with you? Yeah. So you came to me in a unique way because you came to me on the orthopedic side of the house and we kind of transitioned. I was like, my back hurts. And you're like, does it, do you have painful sex? And I was like, well, now that we're (laughs) there, (laughs) wait a minute. I was like, why are you trying to get up all my business today? It's only like nine in the morning. (laughs) And then do you have painful periods? And that's another thing. So just backtracking a little, often people will come to me specifically with pelvic floor referrals. They know that's really, oh yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they'll come to me with pain with sex. They'll come to me with incontinence. They'll come to me with constipation. So hold on one second. So they go into a doctor. Mm -hmm. They say, hey, I'm having all these problems. The doctor, because they don't do this, will say, hey, I have this woman I work with. She's yeah. just does this pelvic floor thing. Yep. Primarily OBGYNs okay. will send people that oh. occasionally like um, primary care. Will really? Also, yeah. But mostly OBs. Mostly the OBs. Okay. Interesting. Because people will say, you know, I'm leaking after I had a baby and a good OB will right away say, go see a pelvic floor PT. I have had a few patients ask for it and have the pe- the. Will a bad OB, say, well, would a bad OB say, why don't you just get a full hysterectomy? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what happened to me. Exactly. Wow. Or wait a year, let's see if it goes away. A fucking own. year, a man. Year. Yeah, so people will be six months postpartum like, hey, I'm still leaking. And they say, wait a year. It'll go back. It'll be fine. Wait it makes me like angry. It makes me angry too because now you're behind the eight ball. Now your muscles are weaker than they needed to be. Fuck yeah, it's awful. Damn. It's awful. So people okay. really have to advocate for themselves. So the OB, the gynecologist, or even sometimes the primary care general physician exactly. will be like, yo, go yep. to this girl. She's amazing. So then they go in to see you mm-hmm. and they mostly are referred by that. But sometimes, are, no, but sometimes it's, it's what you it's have. It's yeah. moi. Yeah. So I've seen this a few times. Um, somebody will come in for chronic back pain. Somebody will come in for chronic hip pain. A lot of times my coworkers will catch it and say, Hey, I've been treating this person and no matter what I do, it's not working. It's not working. So the pointed questions that I end up asking 
are often if they've had kids. Yes. Um, because even though you don't have to have had kids to have this going on, it's very, very common once you've had kids. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter if it was vaginal or C-section, either way. Because the baby's still in there stretching out your shit exactly. and doing a dance. Exactly. Understood. Exactly. And then often I'll say, do you have pain with sex? That okay. is not normal. Yes. You should not have to have pain with sex. That's what, that was one of the things that I was like, yeah, I do. And, yeah. and you know, I love my husband more than a fat kid loves Kate. <laughs> but like you get to the point where you're like, sex is not worth it sure. because it hurts so bad and it hurts for days mm-hmm. after. And I was actually, when we were on the live, I was saying, cause you jog, you always jog my memory and you make me like have these aha moments where I will, I'll have sex and it'll be so painful and it will burn and the tissues will be like tore up from the floor up, <laughs> literally from <laughs> yeah. the floor up. Yeah. And then I will leak Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh my God, am I like peeing my pants? Like, so she's what doing the- kegels on kegels on kegels oh, to yeah. stop leaking. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. what is the kegels on kegels on kegels doing to me? It's taking those tight muscles and making them tighter. <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the worst thing you've got to But when Cosmo tells me what to do with That's my it. pussy, yeah. they're just telling me kegel everywhere. Kegel That's- when you're freaking watching TV. Kegel at the stoplights. Mm-hmm. That's it. And so most people, when they have anything wrong down there, that's their first their first response. Tighten it up. That's it. And if you're somebody who's super strong or somebody who worked out during your pregnancy, your muscles probably aren't weak. What? They're probably a little too tight. Wow. Yeah. So it's like the opposite. But yeah, who would have like known? Gate. So when the muscles are functioning properly, they close like a gate to stop the pee from coming out. Mm-hmm. But when they're really tight, when they're spasmed, they can't close like a gate. So you may, you may some, pa- some patients come in and they say, it feels like something's stuck. Like I'm trying to do it and I just can't close those doors. Dang it. Yeah. How freaking interesting. It's crazy. All right. So painful sex, mm-hmm. because I know that my listeners out there, they're driving or they're walking, you know, in the park or they're yeah. doing their cardio and they're like, holy shit. Yes. This is me. Okay. Yeah. So painful sex, painful sex, bad periods. I had, periods. as you know, the worst. Mm-hmm. I have a lifetime supply of Lisa Rinna diapers <laughs> <laughs> because I got so sick. That's another thing too. I haven't used tampons mm-hmm. in a while because I felt like the tam- the tampons were so painful too. Yeah. And I would have to use a tampon the size of a bunny rabbit to stop my yeah. f- horrible flow. Yeah. And I was just like, fuck it. I'm just going to go old school, red tent style, free bleed into this fucking diaper. It's going to be amazing, which has helped me so much. But even like taking my tampon out when I was using yeah, it. painful. Right? Oh my God. Yeah, so use of tampons and uh, pain with doctor's exams too can be another indication. Okay. So when yeah. you're actually going for like a pap smear yeah. or something like that, you're like, fuck yeah. this hurts. Like you shouldn't need to do breathing exercises for that or take meds for that. If you're having a ton of pain when somebody's doing an exam on you, either they're being too rough, which is possible yeah. for sure, or something is overly tight in there. And they don't look at that really when they're doing their exams. Yeah. They're looking at other stuff. And it's not that they're not doing an important job, mm-hmm. but they don't assess those muscles. So they don't, if they'll say, just relax, it'll be over in a second. They don't know that it hurts. Brace yourself, Effie. Yeah, yeah. Gra- <laughs> grab a drink in the waiting room. They don't understand that what you're having is these like, Lockjaw down there. Oh my God. Yeah. I never thought about it yeah, like that. It's crazy. All right. So, pain during sex, horrible, painful periods, mm-hmm. pain when you have that, like vaginal exams yeah. at your OB. Leaking. What else? Leaking. leaking urine, leaking feces, bowel movements. Yeah. Sometimes that. Oh, I just thought that was like a baseline. <laughs> no. <it's not laughs> After my colonoscopy, <laughs> I'm like, my ass is just not the same. <laughs> yeah. We can address that next time. <laughs> Put a fucking cork up there oh and call it a day. God, yeah. So that could be a problem. And then the opposite, constipation. You literally can leak poop. Yeah. So when people are just like, I just shit my pants. Yeah. Sometimes it's for real. And they think it's funny. They're just like, I just shit my pants. But sometimes it's like, you think it's funny. have a problem. Sometimes people don't think it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's something that we can manage for sure. Dang it. Yeah. It's crazy. Holy fuck. Mm-hmm. So when I was a little girl, my grandmother used to walk around the kitchen and just fart. Yeah. Don't, you don't have to leak. Gear. She would, like, air. She would really, literally yeah. like be like walking around the kitchen and it would be just like, yeah. and then I'd be like, Nana. And she's like, wait till you get my age. Oh my gosh. She probably just had a beat up butthole That's from it. like her having five kids. That's probably, probably oh. a big part of it because their generation. And who talked about these things? They didn't talk about it. There weren't pelvic floor PTs. I actually listened to a podcast on history. It was the depression kids. Really? My grandmother was like saving aluminum foil yes. for like seven years. I think Teddy Roosevelt's wife, somebody. <laughs> of course like, it was Teddy. Died wife. of like prolapse. No. Like she had horrible, like her uterus was just falling. It might not have. Time out. Yeah. I you can like. die of a prolapsed vagina. She well, it's not a vagina, like, but it's it's your uterus. uterus. Yeah. It was so severe that it was like outside of her body. And there wasn't anything that could be done in that day. And they just, she was like in all this pain and getting all these infections and like so miserable. 
And it could have been in, in this day and age, that would have never happened. Oh never happened. my God. It's I'm horrifying. Googling this after we get I off because now I'm like, I don't have the right person. <laughs> Let's just say it was. It was Roosevelt. a president's wife. Holy shit. Yeah. And you can have prolapsed rectum too, right? Mm, you sure can. I've seen that actually. It's rough. Like when someone's dog. squatting. A person? Yeah, it like comes oh, out and you have to like no. shove it back in because you'll crush it. Yeah. Won't you crush your own yeah, rectum? It's like that toy in the 90s. Do you remember that thing that was like, you pushed it through and yes. going and going. Yes. <laughs> the squeezy thing. Yes, yes. Oh my God. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So you can prolapse both those things yeah. and it's just because it, yeah. it doesn't even have to be loose. It could be because it's so tight. Exactly. It's and like expelling it. Yep. It can be the uterus, it can be the bladder, or it can be the rectum. So it can basically close in on all sides or any combination. Holy shit, yeah. dude. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot keep going and tell me more horror. horror stories. What else? What more else is the problem? This is, but I want people to really like take this seriously because. Obviously, we're joking about this because it's the ambitious podcast. You yeah. didn't sign up for Doogie That's Howser 101. <laughs> like, we're not going to educate you from like a medicalized standpoint because it's just boring as hell and you're not going to remember any of the things anyways. But if we make jokes, <laughs> you will remember. Yeah. And we're not joking to make light of what's going on. Right. We're joking because it's um, funny. Right? Yeah. Fart jokes are yeah. funny. Oh, you know, I love a good <laughs> fart joke. Come on. Yeah. I live for that shit. It's really hard when people, I know what what is going on in your body is awful and it's hard to live with, but it, you know, it's fun to laugh about it if while you don't we're getting laugh, it you'll cry. We're going to get it better. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So what, what other problems? Oof. So I have a lot of patients who pee all night long. I was also a long. night long peer. <laughs> I was so also a night long peer. If you're waking up period, waking up at night, you really shouldn't be, but more than once is really. So you should much. never pee in the middle of the night. You should maybe one to. time. Yeah. It, if you drink a lot of water. For sure. Yeah. It's not abnormal to have happen ever, but it's abnormal if it's happening all the time. You shouldn't be waking up. To so I was peeing when we first started working together, probably three to four times a night. I thought it was a normal thing because I was just so hydrated. Yeah. I was just a hydrated so bitch. Healthy. I'm so healthy. I'm just <laughs> peeing all night. On another level. And I would wake up like every two and a half to three hours to pee. And then what would happen to me is I would start thinking about like work and all these different things like while I was peeing and then I couldn't go back to sleep. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm rested because I'm getting my eight hours sleep on the clock. But if you really count, I was probably yeah. never, ever going into a, like a REM sleep. Right. It's interrupted. Wow. And that happens during the day too. It doesn't interrupt your sleep, obviously, but you can't settle into your work or you can't go out with your friends um, because you, you constantly have to be near a toilet. That's a complaint I get a lot from patients is I'm afraid to go anywhere because I don't want to be away from a toilet for more than an hour. Yeah. And that you shouldn't have to live like that. Or you were saying the just in case thing. Oh, the just in Talk case. Talk about the just in case. case. case yeah. So the worst thing that you can do if you have even a hint of urgency or frequency. So urgency means I have, I have, I to, go like I have to go right this second. Yeah. And then you get to the bathroom and you pee for like two seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, frequency <laughs> Me. is similar. It goes hand in hand with urgency. Frequency is having to go every hour on the hour or more. Wow. So you should be able to go a couple hours and you should feel pretty normal. When How many go. times a day should you like pee four to six on rag? Is about normal. Four to six. Yeah. yeah and I got to check myself before I wreck myself. <laughs> I'm going way more than that, If Sam. you're drinking a ton of water and you have full voice, like you're going and you're going for a good long time. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk about how long in a second. But if you're going for a good long time every time you go, it's okay to pee more than four to six okay. times. But more than seven times a day is considered pathological. Yeah. Yeah. I've never been called patholo pathological in my life. She's diabolical, <laughs> pathological. <laughs> That's so interesting. Yeah. So talk about the how long case. people should, yeah. should pee so for. What can happen with the just-in-case piece is, and that kind of describes itself, but for example, I have to go to the grocery store. I need to pee. I don't have to pee right now, but I might have to pee in an hour, so I'm going to go just in case. I feel so attacked. <laughs> I'm so attacked right now. Or I'm going to the doctor and I know I can go as soon as I get there, but just in case I have to go during my eight minute drive, I'm going to go just in case. Mm -hmm. What that does is it rewires the signals in your bladder. So your bladder has a and Your bladder is connected to your brain. It is. Can I get nerdy? <laughs> yes. I love a nerdy. <laughs> so there's a sensor inside of your bladder called the detrusor. It is a little sensor that's meant to tell you when you have to pee because it's stretching out. The first signal that goes from that detrusor up to your brain via walkie-talkie sensor nerve sen yeah. signals, to be very technical, love. Uh, <laughs> love it, should be at about 50% full for your bladder. Okay. We can retrain that and we often do retrain that. That's what's been happening to you. I yeah. And My detrusor's on point. Your detrusor is thinking it's full when it's at like 25% because if you go with that first signal, then your body's like, okay, that was 100%. Like, Next time yeah. we'll warn you earlier. <laughs> Next time we'll warn you a little earlier than that even. So you start You're detraining yourself. You're training yourself to pee all the time. 
So you might not have a small bladder. You may not have an overactive bladder. You've just trained yourself. That first signal is when I have to go. So when Matt says to me, Jesus Christ, do you have a bladder the size of a fucking walnut? It's probably not true. I'm like, I'm just genetically fucked. That's it. And it's probably not necessarily true. So you should be able to pee at least eight seconds. That's what we consider a functionally full bladder. Anything but below eight seconds, you're pathological. You're diabolical, pathological. <laughs> something. That's no, but hilarious. I never knew. Seconds, you're going and your bladder wasn't full. So you might feel like this is when you know that it's urgency. You're like, oh my God, 10 out of 10. If I don't get to the bathroom right now, I'm, I'm going explode. to pee my pants. Yes. And then you get there and it's like four seconds and you feel so much better. That can be a sign of a UTI or it can just be a sign that your bladder now thinks that walnut is enough pee and it's not. So what we do with that is, A, we can change what you're taking in, your foods and your drinks to make sure that you're not overhydrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Overhydrating, underhydrating can be a problem too. Really? When you're dehydrating, your pee becomes really like concentrated and it tickles your bladder and tells it you have to pee. Different teas, coffees, um, alcohol. I wish everyone could just see my face from the side. I'm like... There's so many things that you can put into your bladder that make it feel worse. So that's something that I do with all of my so patients. Like coffee makes me pee my pants. Yes. And yes. because it's the caffeine and the dehydration. And the coffee. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. So even decaf coffee would do it. Really? Not as bad, but it would. But it would still do it. Yeah. And there's things that you can do. You can use that as an education piece for yourself. So like, say you're coming into podcast and you're like, I don't want to interrupt. So I'll have my coffee after my podcast. You can just do it that way. But you can also, there's like, supplements and stuff you can take to change the way your body interacts with no it. Oh shit. Yeah. yeah. How freaking cool, dude. It's so cool. But the most important thing before you just start taking like one of them is called coffee tamer. Before you just start like stirring coffee tamer in every time you have a coffee, yeah. you have to find out if it's really bothersome to you. Mm-hmm. So like we've all been out to the bar where you're like, okay, I don't want to break the seal. seal. I don't want to go pee the first time. I thought I was the only ghetto ass <laughs> bar bitch that said that. I worked at a bar in Boston. I'm like, I broke the seal, guys. It's all downhill from that's here. That's it. That's it. And then you're in the bathroom like every five seconds oh, for the, the rest worst. of the night, right? So that's alcohol. Most people are triggered by alcohol. Most people are triggered by coffee. But there's other things on the list that not everybody has. It's kind of like you can be allergic to dust or whatever. Of you might be stimulated by coffee or apples. Oh my God. It, it could be anything. Damn. So usually I have people log everything that they're eating and, and drinking. And what makes them... And, wow. and when they're leaking or feeling urgency, and we try to correlate it. We do like some sciencey stuff. And then I say, cut it out completely. Yeah. And if your symptoms get better, now we know. Yeah. You can use that as education. I mean, even if you do nothing with it, knowledge is power. You're not out of control. God forbid anyone uses the scientific method anymore. Right. Right. Let's, ha- let's have a hypothesis. Let's just all go crazy. <laughs> so hectic. So chaotic. Yeah, so people come to me and they're like, I'm not giving up my coffee. I'm like, first of all, okay. No, no one like, said you had to, babe. Okay. Nobody said Chill that. out. Calm down. But like, wouldn't you rather know if it was your coffee? 100%. Wouldn't you feel more in control of your symptoms if you could say, today, I'm going to skip the coffee and yeah. have no symptoms at all. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. There's so much to it. Anything else that's like, symptoms of pelvic floor problems in women? UTI symptoms can be. Mm. So I've had a few patients, and this is actually more recently than before. I've been treating pelvic floor specifically for like five years, and I've been a PT for just over 10. Um, I've noticed this year, I'm getting a lot of patients who have chronic UTI symptoms. And they'll say- I've never had a UTI, by the way. So what are the symptoms? So it's pretty uncomfortable. I have to pee. urgency. Yeah. Burning when you pee. And you have to pee like every five seconds. Is it painful? It is painful. Mm. Yeah. And so when it's a true UTI- You'll see like blood in your pee. Ooh, it's pretty severe. Really? Yeah. And that can be bladder infection too. Shit. So always, always go to the doctor. They'll test your pee and they'll say, okay, this bacteria is in it. Here's some antibiotics. You'll get better. Have a good day. A lot of times these people will go back and forth to the doctor and say, I've been to the doctor 20 times. They keep saying there's no um, um, bacteria. Yeah, in there. yeah, yeah. And I can't, I can't get better. I feel this, these symptoms. They're feeling like they're peeing fire all the time and they're urgency is super bad. So they come to me and lo and behold, they had some trauma or maybe a UTI that didn't get treated right away. So the muscles all kind of responded accordingly. It's kind of like whiplash. In your maybe they were being floor. a slam pig and they were just getting raw <laughs> all weekend too, though. That could be it. I mean, honestly, it could be I it. have friends that tell me these things. For they're, sure. Yeah. They're like, I think I have a UTI. I was like, what did you do all week? And they were like, I was just taking Molly and just like fucking random that's, dudes. And, and I was like, oh my much. God, I missed that. <laughs> Those were the days. I love our responses to that. You're like, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, oh, tell me more. Let me live vicariously for and I'm you. Like, that's aggressive, but we can help. <laughs> We can help. So oh sometimes when those muscles spasm like that and they seize like that, your urethra has to come through there. So when the muscles are tightening up, it makes your urethra feel like it's constricted and on fire and 
feeling like you have a UTI and you're not. It's just tight muscles. And I was talking to you when we were on the app about my friend who was diagnosed with like vulvodynia yeah. or whatever. Can we talk a little bit yeah. about that? Because that's also something yeah, that could vulvodynia, be. Vulvodynia, vaginismus. These are... Vaginismus. Yeah, that that's... sounds like a wrestler's name. It is a very cool wrestler's name. Vag- oh, that would be the ones I... that can like lift weights with it, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Vag- what is it? Vaginismus. Vaginismus. So that's like lock, lock jaw of the vaginal entritis. So when you try to have sex, your your whole everything just goes. It, just, it won't let it in, so it can be really really painful. But the doctor just you should listen to the doctor. Just have a glass of wine yeah, and just like let it just slide on in there. Or they could just send you to a pelvic floor physical therapist. God forbid that anyone does their job better. Oh my god, because that's what they say. They, the what do they say when sex hurts? Have a glass of wine. Have a glass of wine. And can you imagine this is what our like abuse. fucking do- it's like, abuse. It's, it's medical it's, gaslighting. It really is, which is rampant. It's they're telling you there's nothing wrong. Which in their defense, which it's not really defensible, but in their defense, there's nothing wrong that they know how to fix. But that doesn't. So they have to tell you that you're a crazy bitch. Yeah, (laughs) that doesn't mean there's nothing wrong. And I would say this. I will shout it from the rooftops. When I see somebody that I can't figure out, I send them to somebody else. I don't tell them there's nothing wrong with them. I don't right. tell them they're making it's it up. So it's so irresponsible, all man. It's awful. It is. So you have these people who have come to you for help, you know, tears in their eyes begging you Which, for help. Which, by the way, when you're talking about, when you're talking about the nether regions, yeah. it's even more, it's not like you're like, oh, I think I have an earache. Right. It's your vagina. It's when your I get ass. new patients, I usually express to them how proud I am of them because it really is like, it's scary. It's easy to go about your life and just spend the extra money on the panty liners and deal with stuff. Oh, the panty liners, child. <laughs> and they're expensive. The yeah. pee panty liners are expensive. I know. And people just live their lives thinking, I'd rather live this way than take that step and tell some, be vulnerable in front of somebody. So I try to make it a safe space because I'm like, I know how scary this is and I know how vulnerable you're making Just be it like out. me. Just talk about your fucking, <laughs> all your shit on Instagram <laughs> and just talk about your painful sex and, uh, yeah. you know, all that on but your you're podcast. People. What you're doing That's why I do it. is helping people. People will hear this and say, whoa, that's me too. And I would never tell my closest friend. I would never even tell, you know, my mom. I, I don't want people to know this. Sam and I will be your closest friend. Let me be your closest friend because when I hear that, first of all, it's illegal for me to tell anyone else. True. Unless you put me on your podcast. (laughs) That's also true. Yeah, but I am a safe space. I won't tell anybody. I won't tell your husband or your friends or your parents or your kids, but it's your worth feeling better. You know, you take that time and you expose yourself and be vulnerable for a few months and the rest of your life opens itself up to you. 100%. I, but I also, and you know me because you always say I'm a good girl. You're a good girl. I'm a good client. I'm a good patient. I really do. But I also know so many women that are my age or even younger that their husbands are just like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Like, get it together. Like, or they make it about themselves, which you know how men love to do that. Like, what is this? Something wrong with me that you don't want to have sex with me? And it's like, bro, it's not about that. Like, I think you're a hot, a hot piece of ass, but like my punani for a week, I will literally, yeah, dude, I would like be walking. Like I had like just got like fisted with a mace, like a medieval fucking (laughs) torture. Still, No. And so it doesn't, I'm living my best life and I'm 42 years old. And they say like, Oh, after 35, you're just, what do they call you? Geriatric. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's what they say. When I was trying to get pregnant, they were like, you would be a geriatric pregnancy. And I was like, please refrain from those (laughs) from that (laughs) terminology. (laughs) Yes, Donna, don't bring, I'm not letting that into myself. Thank you very much. But how many women just go about their lives and they're just so ashamed, sure. which also let's go back to the shame piece for yeah. a second. Now you're talking your tail. Yeah. Now you're having more pain with sex. Cause I'm not a, I'm not a real woman because I don't want to have sex and I'm not in that like sexual energy or you can be like how I was raised by the women around me and be like, Oh, after like you have kids, it's like sex is like nothing. It's like, yeah. what? Yeah. It's like our birthright to be sexual beings. Yeah. And the other thing that they'll say is after you have kids, you should just leave. That's just the way things go. You sh- you shouldn't be able to go back to everything. Your body will never. This is, this makes me so, my, it makes my blood boil. Yeah. People say, well, once you've had kids, you'll never be the same. Your body will never feel the that same. That makes me so, I don't even have children, but that makes me so angry from for all the women around me that I love who have multiple children and being told you'll just never be the same. Can you imagine? It's an awful thing. And then Jennifer Lopez is like riding the pole and she's like 50 fucking whatever years old. It's bullshit. It doesn't have to be that way. And people tell us, you know, it's okay that you don't feel good anymore. It's okay that you're leaking. It's okay. And I don't know if that's laziness or lack of education, but it's not okay. Yeah. And also because we were talking about like why I first came uh, to you. So all those things, but you can also have 
hip pain, mm-hmm. back pain. Um, my back pain was weird because it was re- it was coming around and it was going into like my psoas, which is probably why I asked you about the sex. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what that's what it was. Yeah, I was like, oh, it wraps around, and you're yeah. like, and then you asked me about the sex thing, mm-hmm. and I was like, well, now that we're on it, yeah, and then the period thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And and I don't have that pain anymore. Like that pain that would radiate to the front of my stomach, like right, right where like, you know, your hip junction is. Um, it would be so bad. I would be sitting at night just like chilling, like watching TV. And it would just be like a toothache, like wow, wow, like just so painful. And then when I would go to sleep, I could never get comfortable in bed. So then I would sleep all fucked up yeah. just to like yep. ball myself up into like this little ball to like take some kind of pressure off my lower back. And I don't have any of that anymore. It's amazing. So all of it's gone. So my period, perfect. No painful sex. I don't, well, I never really leaked, but now that I was talking about that yeah, whole situation. It felt like you were leaking. Yeah, it was just like, yeah, just spitting a little bit sometimes. Yeah. It was getting a little floppy. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's really important to reiterate, like everybody thinks when they're leaking, it's because they're weak and they should just do a bunch of kegels. And I guess I'll just be weak because I'm a mom and I haven't been working out as much as I should be or whatever. Or not moms, because people who haven't had kids also have pelvic floor dysfunction. Yeah, absolutely. And leaking. And men have it too. And men have it too. Wow. It's yeah. so crazy. So let's talk a little bit about what you actually do. Yeah. So you light a candle. I light a candle, spray some perfume. <laughs> you get Imagine. a good, you get a beautiful glass of Chianti. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's not like that. I swear to God. <laughs> No, so have a have a have a Cosmo, and you're going to be fine. And we start by getting to know each other, and I think this is something that separates me from when you go to like the OB because you go to the OB and right away there the nurse comes in and is like, take off your clothes and put on this like piece of paper that isn't big enough to cover your body, and it's going to rip as soon as you move, and like your butt is against the table, and yeah, it's so uncomfortable. And your tits are underneath your armpits, <laughs> and you're like so, so fun. nervous, whatever. So I don't start like that. You you always have room. like a pair of underwear hiding in your purse. <laughs> Your Have you seen those like forbid, TikToks yeah. lately? God forbid the OB searches your chair and finds it. Yes, yeah, exactly. that's what it is. Exactly. So no, we start with a lengthy conversation. I want to hear about everything um, from sex to leaks to how you sleep to what you do for a workout and how that's changed over time and why it's changed. Uh, so we get a really thorough history. It probably takes at least half of the first time. Yeah. Um, then we go into a physical exam and that depends on what you tell me during our interview. Mm -hmm. So it may be more orthopedic. I might be looking at how your back moves, what your squat looks like, um, your range of motion, your core activity, uh, your strength. But if you're telling me things like, I feel like I'm really weak. I feel like I'm always leaking. I only have pain with sex, nothing else. Oftentimes that leads us down the road of a pelvic floor exam. So when my patients consent to that and want to go forward with that, it's a very, comfortable experience yeah. as much as I can make it. No, it's it's so enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> you would. I love it. I'm like, yeah. this is great. I could just lay here and talk to my friend. And she, yeah, and then I feel like a million bucks after. Yeah. It's crazy. So you are on a table with sheets. So it's, again, none of that paper nonsense. You're not like crinkling around. You're on a pillow. It's a relaxed environment and you're draped. So I have to do a little bit of visual inspection to make sure things look okay when I'm doing uh, pelvic floor work. I'm very much a physical therapist in that I work with my hands, not my eyes as much. Mm. So once the visual inspection is done, the sheets come down and it's all by feel. And once that happens... So when you're visually expect, mm-hmm. uh, you know, looking at everything, yeah. what do you look... Are you looking for certain things? I'm looking for atrophy. I'm looking for breaks in skin. But what? <laughs> Talk about atrophy. We were just having a whole conversation on my app about clitoral atrophy. And I was it. like, whose clit is atrophy in? And we don't... I don't believe that that is happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get canceled over no clit atrophy. But. I mean, yeah. So what I'm looking for is if you have, for instance, a lumbar disc herniation, okay. it can cause muscular atrophy and it can be visually apparent to me that something is not right. Uh, so I'm looking at your inner thighs. I'm looking at your groin. I'm looking at, I'll have you do a kegel and see what happens. If the top is coming down, but the bottom isn't winking up. Yes it will indicate to me that something, so there's some disconnection. That might be a nerve. It might just be the muscles didn't, that they forgot how to they, work together. They didn't fire yeah. together the right and way. And we have to re-educate them on how to do wow. that. Yeah. So that part's pretty brief. Okay. And then we go into an inspection. There's three different layers of muscles in there. So I inspect all three by feel. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for whether they're 
after one finger, me. by the way, guys. One this finger. is not the shocker. No speculum. It's a single glove. <laughs> remember the, the shocker? The shocker. Two in the pink, one in the oh stink. My God. Yeah, that's not what we do. No, nope. it's not just it. one finger. Nope. And one... she's got small hands, just saying. Yeah, they're pretty small. She doesn't have like fucking banana hands or like no. catch with mitts or anything no. like that. <laughs> Little hands. <laughs> so one gloved lubricated finger. And I assess all three layers. I assess them for strength. I assess them for trigger points, which are knots in your muscle. You can get knots down there. You just feel like you it? Can, oh, yeah. So if you put your hand, if you put your finger in, mm-hmm. you can actually feel like Katie yes. has a knot yes. in her foo-foo. Yes. So what I feel this is, is crazy. <laughs> if you put your finger on your hand, and okay. I feel like around the palm, just keep your hand relaxed. Yeah. That's what it should feel like. And then tense so, your hand. kind of smushy. Yeah. If you tense your hand, do you oh, feel that? Yeah. yeah. So that's what it feels like. And then when I push on it. So it's like rigid. You feel it too. Yes. Yeah, it's rigid. So I'm pushing and it's like smushy, 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 rigid. Yeah. And I can feel sometimes scar tissue will feel like little beads. Whoa. Um, but yeah, it feels like a big... Like, what is scar tissue from? Could be like tra- birth trauma, yep. things Sex like that. trauma, anything. Wow. Anything, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Endometriosis is okay. another one. Yep. So that's really painful periods, but it can lead to scar tissue down mm-hmm. there for sure. So interesting. Yeah, and so when we release those muscles, people will often feel oh, that's my pain in my hip or that's my pain in my back or my groin or wherever. Yes, yes. Sometimes they just feel it right where I'm at, but that's the pain that they experience. The first time that I had it done, I was saying to Sam, I go, I'm fucking deaf. <laughs> and she's like, what? You had like ringing in your ear. I it had like referral. It wasn't really pain. It was more like it just, I, it shot up to my left ear mm-hmm. and I like made me go deaf. And I was like, damn, you like- That was crazy. <laughs> you just re- you, you did me so good. I just lost my hearing, girl. <laughs> And I was like, holy fuck, this is crazy. And then the like this week that you did it, my whole right leg was having like a full-blown grand mal seizure <laughs> convulsion. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And then all of these like memories from my childhood started coming up. And I was like, whoa, this is it's wild. Trauma. Yeah. And that's what that you see a lot of that. I do. I do. Yeah. People who've had trauma, sometimes they don't even remember it. And then it's a whole... It just, we store just it down there. It, You just push yeah. it down. You forget about it. We just, we can't release those muscles on our own. We just can't. Wow. So, when so you've get, seen women have like real Oh yeah, like movement. tears. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really like, hard. Yeah. And it's often for me, I'm like, should I, should I stop? Yeah. And most of the time they say no. No, plow through, just, man. Yeah, Because they just need to move that energy. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And do you notice like when people have these like, uh, kind of like metaphysical energetic releases that they like just become different afterwards. Yes. And it doesn't typically, sometimes the knots come back. It doesn't typically come back in the same just way. Just like yeah. with your own body, exactly. your neck, like, oh, my neck is so tight yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And that can be, I always describe this to people because I do dry needling too and the knot in the pelvic floor, but I do it in the, you know, the hips. Yeah. Back, anywhere I've else. had it before. Yeah. And it's incredible, right? Mm-hmm. It really, really works. Oh Yeah. I used to, I love this example. I used to work on my brother and he had headaches all the time and mm-hmm. we were, we got them fully under control with the dry needling. But after a long time, they just kept coming back and we're like, what is going on here? And this is my brother. That's the Navy pilot. Yeah. We're like, why do these headaches keep coming back? I feel like I'm really, I'm working hard here. Of course. And we finally figured out it was because he was all like jacked up in his airplane. So he would be flying for like 12 hours at a time with his arm link. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so it's just getting stuck there. Exactly. So you can't just address something like you can't just go get a massage and then like sit all janky for the rest of your life and be like, why? Did Stay it louder for the people or? in the back. Right. <laughs> Self-care is great, but you have to make these changes. If you have bad posture, if you are sleeping funny, even if you, you don't have, you know, bad posture, but you cross the same leg, you always cross your right leg over you. That may impact your pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. You could have single-sided pain because you always cross your right leg over. You know what else I thought was really interesting when I started working with you? Um, And this is when like TikTok and like reels and shit, like social media fuck you up because have you ever seen that TikTok was like, you may um, have autism or you may have ADHD if you sleep this way? Have you ever seen those? I haven't. Did you diagnose yourself? Yeah. Oh no. (laughs) So (laughs) Matt was one day, he was like, oh, I just saw this reel the other day that was like, Oh, if you have, if you sleep this way, you have like severe ADHD or you have autism and it's like you sleep with like T-Rex hands. Oh yeah. Have you ever seen this before? I haven't, but that is a neurological. Okay. Yeah. Well, I like sleep. If you watch football when they get hit hard, they're like, oh my God. Yeah. What? Yeah. I've been hit hard my whole life. <laughs> That's why I sleep that way. But you always get up. I always get up, man. I always get up. I'm selling my brain to science, man. I'm telling you. But I was sleeping like that for so many years. And I sleep like that with my little T-Rex arms curled up in a little ball. And I put like a pillow in between my legs. And then when I roll to the right, 
I have to like bring the pillow with yeah. me. It's a whole fucking situation. But that's good for your back and your pelvic floor. But I haven't been sleeping that way anymore. You haven't needed to? Oh, we cured it. Hand on heart. ADHD. Or autism or whatever. I mean, honestly, because if you're saying it's a neurological thing, yeah. I mean, who knows? Yeah. And when I, I mean, I'm 42. So like autism is, a fi- I mean, it was around, but it was yeah. like a fairly it wasn't newer really diagnosis. No. Yeah. And ADHD, they were just like, that kid's a troublemaker. <laughs> That's it. Put that kid's, t- Let's put get that some Ritalin up in here, please. <laughs> oh, no, they didn't even do that. I would love the, I'd love the medicine. They just would put my like fucking desk in like the corner of the room and oh put me. God. Yeah. I went to Catholic school. Yeah. They would be like, wrap your knuckles about it. Oh yeah, I got hit with fucking rulers, and then beat the ADHD right out of you. Yeah, here. that it really works. Did not work. <laughs> Can confirm. <laughs> Every weekend, I would have to like write a thousand times, like I will respect my elders before I did anything. And look at you now. I love you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Body of Christ. Yeah, I mean, it was not a good, but I think that that's crazy. I know it's like, (laughs) but isn't that wild how I haven't been sleeping like that? It's amazing. I sleep like a normal human. And that's because you do the work though. I mean, I have so many patients that unfortunately need me for longer than I think they probably would if they were as compliant as you. You take this and you make it part of your life. And it, it's, it's such a gift. It's That's what I look at this as like a gift. Yeah. Because you went through all this schooling and all this training. You're fucking smart as a whip. Like, why wouldn't I listen to you? Just like you listen to me when I tell you certain Absolutely. things. It's like, uh, what the fuck? Absolutely. What are we doing over here? Yeah. It's, I get a lot of people that come to me, not a lot, but a fair percentage of people that come to me that will come to me week after week. And they're like, it's not better. And I'm like, oh, did you like change any of the things? Any, I gave you like 10 things to work on. Have you tried any of them? And they're like, yeah, no. Why are you wasting your time? Why are you paying copays? Why are you coming to see me if you're not going to do the things I say? Well, it's a victim mentality, it. which you know I love that. I know you love that. It's my favorite. Yeah. I just think it's like, A, like people are looking outside of themselves to cure themselves. Mm-hmm. All you should be looking for outside of yourself is tools and people who know more than you in that arena. Yep. But you have to then take that information and integrate it into an uh, and alchemicalize it into your own being. Because when you do, you get this magical response where your life starts turning around. I mean, I've listened to a lot of what you say in here, but um, things fall into place and it's not just going to be your pelvic floor things falling into place. But when you aren't so hung up on not being able to do anything you like to do because of that, your path is cleared to do other great things. Right. And I also, I know this is like probably corny or whatever, but I actually feel happier like, I feel like I have a more of a quality of life. Like, even when I'm doing just like small tasks that are mundane, I'm like happy and I'm smiling because I'm not feeling that pain all the time. Yeah. And when I'm getting it, and when I'm getting it in too. And, I, and that's another thing too. When you're having more sex and you actually feel like, wow, this doesn't feel like, you know, medieval torture. That's it. And you're not, this is great. You're sleeping through the night. Your body is now able to heal. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to stop pissing every three minutes. Yeah. You're not spending your life savings on Lisa Renna diapers. <laughs> I have a lifetime supply, people. I'll be handing out free samples at Costco later. It's embarrassing to say this, but like, you know me, I'm an open book and whatever. I don't want anyone to ever feel embarrassed for anything that they're going through. Yeah. And I feel like the more that people who are like leaders in our community, like me, say like, yo, I wear, I had to wear diapers, dude, because of my, like, I was bleeding so bad. And people are like, fuck me too. They don't feel as bad because I think that most people look at me and they're like, wow, Katie's got her shit together. And it's like, actually, no, I, I wear a diaper. <laughs> Not all the time. Dude, I have like special, I used to have special outfits that were like my diaper outfits. Oh, so it wouldn't show. Yeah. I don't want anybody to know that. idea. I, yeah. But then did I tell you, this is so off topic, but <laughs> Matt, I had got my period like a couple months ago and I was like, Matt, I'm all, out of my diapers. Will you get me diapers? And he got me diapers oh, and Matt. love him. But he got me quadruple X. Oh, Matt. So it was like 600 no. pound life diaper. No, man. Yeah, like Dr. Nwater was like, if you had just listened to me, you would have lost the weight <laughs> three him. months ago. Oh my God. Do you have a connection to him from your show? I need to. We need to meet him. Oh, I love him. He's like my favorite person in the world because he fucking says everything I say. How it is. Yeah. I need golden stethoscopes. Yeah. You wanted to lose 60 pounds? Well, you should have. He's like, worse. you should have listened to me. <laughs> Three months ago, you would have not been still fat. Stop supersizing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just like, bro. But I, he got me 4X diapers and I remember putting them on and I, it, it was like. <laughs> that went from like a sweet gesture to like a what? I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I go, I'm not that fat. And he was like, what are you talking about? They're all the same. I'm like, bro, oh, they're like, they're like size sizes. Does not fit. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to put you in some fucking Spider-Man underwear next time <laughs> I buy me some fucking new undies. Get him some toddler stuff. Perfect. Put those big balls in those yeah, little underwear, motherfucker. They're very absorbent. So if you are a male who takes, <laughs> which is a thing, 
<laughs> Who would have known? Who would have known? Who would have? And it's not just old dudes that leak. Nope. No, I've got people in their 20s. It's crazy. Actually, one of my people recently told me he's been having it since he was a kid. So it happens. Uh, since he was a kid? Since he was a kid. Whoa. That's a tough life, you know? Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's really hard. All the cool kids pee the pants. <laughs> that's it. You need to be friends with Billy Madison or you're out. <laughs> 100%. Thank God for Billy. Yeah. And there's so much that can be done for it. So people just deal with it and keep it private and hide it and have special outfits so that nobody knows so yeah. the symptom. But I, I like to really make it a welcoming environment when I help people. And I hope that other public floor therapists are the same. I assume they are. We are here because we're trying to help. We're here because we want to make it a comfortable environment to let out some things that you feel like are secrets. I sometimes will say to patients because they get all like flustered and embarrassed during our first interview. Yeah. I'm like, if you can tell me anything that I haven't heard before in this room, I'll buy you a candy bar because I've heard some stuff, like some stuff. <laughs> Not a candy bar. I'll get you a candy, <laughs> candy bar. I like candy. <laughs> I love you. It takes balance. Man. I'm sure you've heard so much shit. Oh, so much. Like wild, yeah, wild and stuff. Stuff that, you know, genuinely people don't want to be feeling this way and they will do anything to get better. And so they come and tell me when things have reached their rock bottom. Mm. So like, if you think there's two sides to that, right? If you think that I don't want to go talk to her because she's going to judge me or feel some sort of a way about what yeah. I'm saying, it's not true. I've heard it all. And then on the other side of things, I get patients sometimes who will come in and be like, yeah, I don't really know that I need to be here. Like I leak, but it's just a little, like I only wear, I wear a liner and I only leak like once every few days. And I'm like, <sighs> If it's not, Why do you have to normal, do it at all? You should come to me. And honestly, it's easier for me to treat you when you come to me right away versus waiting 10 years and letting it get worse. If your teeth were falling out every few days. Just a little. You... <laughs> what the fuck? It's okay to just... If you're just a little stop. pregnant, you yeah, know? That's like, yeah, on. you're either doing it or you're not. <laughs> yeah. It's, so I think really an important sentiment for people is to not let, not be medically gaslit because probably that mentality comes from when they told their doctor and their doctor said, oh, it's just a little and you had kids. It does not have to be that way. It's so fucking crazy, yeah. man. If you don't want to live like that, then don't. Then you don't have to because yeah. there's resources out there like you. Yeah. So after the initial time that you do your thing, mm -hmm. what is like the normal time span that people usually work with you on the pelvic floor stuff? Is there different yes. levels? Yeah. So depending on how severe your symptoms are, like I just said, if you come right away and you're just leaking a little... It will probably be four to six sessions. Nice. And that would be my guess if you're doing the Katie Boyd lifestyle where you like do everything you're supposed to do outside. Okay, talk to them that they're not doing the Katie Boyd lifestyle. If they're not. They're doing the it could be lazy a while. fuck. Lifestyle. Yeah, it could be a while. You might end up having to see me four months. Right. And I don't, I love my patients. I really get along with a lot of people that of course. see me. So I love hanging out with people. I don't want you to have to see me that long. Yeah. I'd rather you get discharged and we go get like some tea somewhere or something like <laughs> yes. let's hang out somewhere else where you're not having this issue anymore yeah. because I don't uh, my goal is to make myself like work myself out of a job mm -hmm. I don't want to have to be working with the same totally. There's enough people right you're not good at what you do if people are like 10 years exactly. still trying to like do this exactly maybe come back for a touch-up like there are well that's what I like I like to get like my little tune-up yeah for like, sure every so often you know for sure but if you have to see me once a week for the rest of your life to not pee yourself I haven't done my job and you haven't done yours. Totally. So ideally four to six sessions, if it's acute or like just a little bit, if it's more chronic, if it's 20 years, I mean, you are still only three or four sessions because yeah. you did the, you did everything the way you were supposed to. It, it can be, I don't know, eight or 10 sessions probably mm -hmm. if it's more chronic. The way that I'll be practicing from now on is taking a full hour with people. So I have more time to say, okay, it's your pelvic floor, but it's also like a little bit the way you're walking or the way you're sleeping. And we're yeah. going to address that today too. Right. Maybe we can do a little exercise and a little hands-on therapy. Yeah. So it'll provide a little bit more space to get into not just the pelvic floor, mm -hmm. but maybe other areas it's referred. Often people with pelvic floor pain, I told you before, um, have neck pain or jaw pain or just tension elsewhere. That's something that I have the skills to address as somebody with a right. long history as an orthopedic it's, physical therapist too. That's what I love so much about you because I would go in and you would be like, okay, today we're going to just be in the gym mm -hmm. working on A, B, C, and D. And I would do those things. And then that maybe the next time I'd come in and you just do like the internal stuff yeah. and it would go back and forth. And both of the things helped me. But of course, you know, because I've worked out my whole life, like I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. You have me do the plank. You have me do this thing. I get what, and I totally understand everything you're doing. And you integrate it into your life. I do. It's not like, okay, we did that once. You're better. Like I still do my marbles yeah. for my feet. 
And I still, yeah, and I still do. It It is. And remember when we first started working together, I couldn't do the toe yoga. yoga, I can do it like amazing now. That's awesome. Yeah, but I work, but I do it all the time. Yeah, so many people say, I can't do that. Toe yoga is when you try to lift. So like, if you're not driving, take your shoe off and your sock off. (laughs) Yes. But if you are driving, don't. Don't do this. (laughs) you try to lift just your big toe and keep the other four toes down and then do the opposite. Put your big toe down and the other four toes up. It's so hard. It's hard. If I used to be a bar instructor before I was like doing all this. So I can do it and I like to run. So it's really important for like runners. If you can't do this and you're a runner, you're a ticking time bomb, dude. Come in and see somebody. Yeah, you're getting hammer toes. You're getting bunions. You're getting all this shit. Mm -hmm. Like, And the thing for me is like, I knew how much pain I was in when my when that thing happened to my foot. Yeah. And I was like, I will never allow myself to ever get like this again. Yeah, because you're active. You want to be golfing. You want to be lifting. You want to be doing Absolutely. Just, just like, yeah, rocking. Just like moving my body though and just like wa- cleaning my house. Yeah. Right? Like I'm like walking on the hardwood floors all day and then like I could start feeling like that little pain. And I was like, oh, I got to go stretch. Got to go do my little marbles with my feet. And it's the same thing with the pelvic floor where, you know, you got to work. You, you can't just do something once and be like, oh, it's fixed. That's it. And so one of my favorite quotes about PT and so nerdy, but whatever, physical therapy isn't somewhere you go. It's something you do. Mm. So you integrate it in your life and you don't have to come there anymore. Yeah. The people who don't are the ones that become the frequent flyers. And, you know, we're here for that too. We'll help you. But I want to help you be your best self. I want you to be golfing and running and doing the things you love yeah. without thinking about what is going on of course, elsewhere. Of course. No, I 110% agree. I also think that we have to embody what we think. And we also have to say to ourselves, like when I wake up in the morning, I'll say to myself, okay, what does someone who's an athlete who is a multimillionaire, who is a leader, how does she act? What does she do? How does she speak? How does she dress? I know that sounds like overwhelming to people because the people like that's what you think every day because I really do believe that your thoughts, your words, and your deed shape your reality. So I think back to all of the pain I ever had in my life from the time that I hurt my back when I was deadlifting after the car accident, right? To the time that I hurt my foot. And because I'm so self-aware of everything that's going on in my life, I can say, oh, right before I hurt my foot, I was really stressed out with work and I was like in a bad place mentally. And like, I really do believe that so many of the pain that so much of the pain that we have in our lives is a byproduct of trauma or stress or overwhelm or whatever. And we're just not moving the energy the correct way. And so I bet like 90% of the people that are going to listen to this, if they really think about the pain that they're having, they could say, yeah, this pain started when I got my divorce Mm -hmm. or this pain started when I became an empty nester or this pain started when I had that sexual trauma, whatever, you know, say that to people, what changed what in your life, it could be stress at work. It could be a lot of this started for people during COVID because they're Mm. all of a sudden they're sitting at their kitchen table, doing their job instead of at their desk, their ergonomic setup is terrible. They're stressed. They're learning how to like have their family all in 12 square feet and zoom their tits off. Exactly. Yeah. And all these symptoms. So they're like, yeah, it's been years, like two and a half, like March of 2020. (laughs) (laughs) Right. No, hundred percent of the correlation. I I think back of like the last three years and I'm like, damn, I went through like a lot of like shit. Yeah. Just personally, not even because of COVID, but I really do believe that the correlation is like this. I call it like sneaky stress Mm because we were all just like trying to survive during that time. Yeah. And then I think when things like, quote unquote, tried to go back to normal or whatever, I think that that's when everyone fell apart. Yeah. Because we don't know how to do it anymore. I know. Well, and to go back to the urgency and frequency, you're all of a sudden working at home. You're probably going to go pee as soon as you feel like you need to. Because Cause if you're at work, your boss is watching you exactly. or, you know, you can't just like get off the line and go or the toilets gross and you don't want to go there more yes. than you need to. But you're at home and everything's like comfy, cozy the way you like it. You're probably going to go more. I think the the pee thing started for me also when I slipped in someone's shit in market basket toilet. No. Did I ever tell you that That's story? Horrible. Yeah, I had a pee because I was like trying not to like pee all the time. Shout out to market. Basket. Shout out to market casket. <laughs> market bastard. <laughs> and I'll never forget it. I was in Market oh, Basket God. in Londonderry and I was like, that's a nice one. Too. It is a nice one. But mm-hmm. well, someone dropped a deuce on the floor and I had a pee so bad. And I was like trying to like get my Lululemons off because they were like skin tight. And I had, wait a minute, this is the worst part of the story though. I had flip flops on. So when I went to go squat over the toilet to pee, 
my like left foot like went right like no. flew out and i was like oh. what the fuck and i looked down and it was just someone's dookie on the ground and it and the shit wrapped itself around my foot like over my uh. girl i had to wash my foot in the sink at market basket with one of those faucets that go on and off so you have to keep like putting your foot this is the most horrible bro no wonder why i don't want to piss in a fucking real no. in a so when I keep saying like, and you're on your way to the grocery store and you're, you're like, I'm like, I will never be in a grocery store again. <laughs> oh, that's so dramatic. Can you imagine? And first of all, that person who pooped on the floor probably also needs to see me. Dude, you know, it was like, couldn't get over the bowl. It couldn't get over the bowl. Dude, think about that though. Also too, is squatting mm, over a toilet I'm good? Glad you said that. It is not. <laughs> It is not. But everyone tells you, yeah. squat over the toilet. Don't put your bum down. Like I, I'm don't. talking like if there's not a line, like there's not a toilet liner. So here's two things to not do. Don't pee in the shower. Well, you know, that's fine. <laughs> it's up to you. It's between your shower. <laughs> that's between you No, but I saw car. something about pelvic floor where you shouldn't stand up and pee in the so shower. You don't want to. Not that I do that, by the way. By the way, I don't pee in the shower. Yeah, no, nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> Wash your showers, guys. <laughs> so... Uh, you don't want to create an urgency situation where your brain links being in the shower with peeing. So you don't want to pee in the shower, but it's it's not going to like make your body worse. Oh God, it's just one of those like that. key in the door. Like, yeah. You have now linked this with peeing. The key in the door thing similar. You've now linked getting home with peeing. So I usually say to people, find something else to do before you pee. Take a deep breath. Go wash your hands. Yeah. Brush your hair. Yeah. Then go pee. Oh and if God. you're like terrified that you're not going to make it, I have this one person. I was like, undo your belt buckle and undo your button. So, like, if you're really not gonna make it, you this just shove your hands severe. down. Yeah, but that's when a lot of times people will be like, okay, it's time to pee. Oh my god, I have to go right now. So, set yourself up to un like break that cycle because it's your doozer. It's your it's, what's it called? <laughs> what's that thing called? <laughs> detruser. <laughs> your doozer. I like that. Your doozer. Like it's your detruser. Oh yeah. My god. So that don't power pee. So like push it out real quick. I out. do that all the time. You know, because you're in a hurry. Don't. It'll save you like five seconds. Don't. Don't power pee. Because that you're now using these muscles that you should be. Can I power pee. shit? You, if you want. No. It's my baseline. So, when you're using those muscles to power pee to push it all out, those are the muscles that you should be relaxing to let things open and then closing back up after. So power. Who would have known this guy? Problematic. And on that same page, squatting and hovering. You use those same muscles. So, so like at a keg now. party when you're hanging on to the fucking back Upside of someone's down, car. I feel like it's different. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you you're don't just like hover. holding like, yeah. oh, it's like drunk, and you're just <laughs> holding on your to jeans. someone's car. No bueno. And then when you're hovering over a, a public, I almost called it a potty because I have a three year old. When you're hovering over a toilet, you don't want that either. So what I do is I just take a bunch of toilet paper and like make myself a little nest. Yeah, a little nest. Um, and then I can sit. But if you're hovering, you're using the very muscles that you're trying to relax to let the pee out. Who would have thunk? So you're confusing them. Who would have thunk? Yeah, your body is a... Oh, what about the squatty potty? Squatty potty is great. Like, so everyone should have a squatty potty? PTs love squatty potties. Yeah, we love squatty potties. They relax those muscles. Again, those muscles that are supposed to be relaxed to let things out can get really tense and tight. And that, if they're tense and tight, that can explain some people who they pee and then they stand up and they're like, what I have to I have to pee again? Yeah, it's like you don't fully I empty. Didn't let it fully empty. Yeah. Um, how come when Matt touches the crack of my ass, it makes me want to pee? Oh. I hate it. I want to fucking chop his hands off. Like you ever like on the crack? Yeah, like you know, like you're you're walking in front of your husband Weird. and he thinks it's cute to like poke you in the ass. <laughs> I don't, we don't do that. No, I don't uh, like it. It's not my thing. I'm going to say big thanks to Dave on that. Like when Matt, like he'll like, you know, in the kitchen, he'll be like, oh yeah, it'll smack my ass. And I'll be like, even smacking away. it does that or just, like, no, just but salute every, not in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was in. I meant no, in your pants. Like when it's I, against your skin. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to do it to you? <laughs> no, like, I'm in the high Like right in like your coccyx bone. Okay. He'll like and go just beep. like up in there. Like he'll like just do that beep. And all of a sudden I'll feel like my vagina. i like, drop like i i'm what? it's the weirdest Weird. thing there's a lot going on is it because my vestigial tail is growing back Probably. from evolution it's definitely growing back no so there's a few different things and that actually reminded me of something else matt stop touching that part of my Don't ass that, i'm gonna matt. break your little fingers that's enough i'm gonna break your sausage <laughs> <laughs> claws so there's a few different things that can happen lower in your sacral spine yes. that's where the nerves come out that control peeing and pooping mm. so it's certainly possible that he's like poking somewhere funky that is just doing that Rude. And then higher up. Yeah. Um, this is so interesting to me. I have two patients recently that have had something like this going on. The thoracolumbar junction. So right at the bottom of your rib cage yes. where it goes into the top of your lumbar yeah. spine. It's not a common space to have back pain. It's really like fairly uncommon. Right. Most back issues are like L4, L5, L5, mm -hmm. L5 S1. Mm -hmm. um, where it comes up to the rib cage, that's where the nerves come out that 
touch your pelvic floor. Like they they create the sensation for your pelvic floor. So you can have disc herniations there that can cause pelvic floor symptoms. Wow. And I had somebody this year who came to me from her OB. She had just incontinence and we were working together for a few sessions when she revealed to me that she had that incontinence from when she was being, she, she was a power lifter. It was before she had her son. She was Damn. a power lifter. And we stopped treating internally and started only treating the lumbar spine. We did traction. We did dry needling. We yeah. worked on all that stuff. And it completely resolved. Holy shit. Yeah. So where we left it, we were like, okay, you're fine now. But if this herniation worsens, that could be a problem. So I sent her to a spine specialist to say, let's, you know, get an MRI. Let's yeah. figure out what the status is because, you know, you don't want to be 80 and all of a sudden you have no control because that herniation's worse. Damn. So she's, as far as I know, in really, she's really good. good condition now. That's awesome. But it was all coming from her back and not the other way around. Wow. So yours was coming from down there. Hers yeah. Was, yeah. It's, it's, there's so much. The body is such a wild fucking I playground, isn't it? I have patients all the time that are like, man, this thing should come with an instructor manual. I'm like, I wish. Here I am. Well, you, I mean, you are that person, but I just, uh, my, my wish, which, you know, wishes are for losers, but. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is wishing, that Katie yeah, like is, a, I need to like, put I need to put that on a shirt sure. for Christmas. Wish wishing <laughs> is for losers. Merry Christmas. Merry losers. fucking Christmas, you built the animals. <laughs> but honestly, like I get so angry because I'm just like, this is your body for however long you're on this earth. Like you need to learn. And we don't know how much about it. Nothing. Like maybe I should put something out that is an instructor manual because instruction manual because there are things that everybody eats and drinks. Have I shown you the list before of the things no. that can bother your bladder? Oh my God, let's talk about because that. Because you don't have leaks. Um, so if people are leaking. You never know. You never know. No, never I'm never so going to have a leak because you fix my, you fix me. <laughs> but it. for all those people out there. Yeah. So one of the first things that I do if people, especially if it's like primarily leaking, that's the issue that they came to me for, is I say, log what you eat and drink, eat and drink for about a week, okay. four or five days. Yeah. Um, before I became a pelvic floor therapist, I thought it was only things that you drink that could impact your PP situation. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's what you eat too. So it can be spicy foods, chocolate. It can be apples. Uh, there's all sorts of different things that wow. you think are good for you. Even yeah. cranberries are on there. When you have yeah, a because, UTI, you're like pounding cranberries. Oh, yeah, they're taking the pills and you're doing yeah. all that shit. Damn. Yeah. So these things hit that detruser and they poke it and they say, you got to pee. You got to pee right now. So you might think that you're doing a really good thing. So I have patients that'll come to me and be like, I drink a gallon of water a day. And then they do their little logs and we find out that gallon of water is all seltzer. Carbonated beverages. Oh God, I mean, come on. Car carbonated beverages. The worst thing ever, bladder. bro. Yeah. And it leaches your bone. Yeah. Let's so, talk about that. You're going to be <laughs> osteoporotic and you're going to piss your pants. Yeah. Or people having all this like protein powder, artificial sweeteners, terrible on your bladder. Wow. So you're having, you know, your diet, whatever, your fake sugar, whatever. And it's really, it's... They think I'm being bladder. healthy. I'm not spiking yes. my blood sugar, but yes. you're doing other problems. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes I'll have people who, I had this lady recently cut out seltzer and 75% of her symptoms were gone. Stop. Gone. Oh like 10 God. years of leaking and it was gone overnight because she just learned how to handle her that beverages. That is mind blowing. Insane, right? Damn it. So what I like to do though is I don't want to take stuff away from people. I want to help them be educated in what they should and shouldn't do to not have symptoms. We're not saying don't ever have seltzer water for the right. rest of your life. Right. But like if you're drinking a gallon of seltzer water a day. <laughs> don't do that. Jeez Louise. That's a lot of seltzer. Oh my God, I'd be burping like a sailor. Yeah. Damn. Or if you are somebody who has, I've had people come in and be like, you can't have my coffee. I have six cups a day and it's what I do. Yes. Um, I'll do anything to stop leaking. What is happening in your life that you need six, six cups, cups of yeah. coffee? Yeah. And, and so, I love coffee, by the way. Coffee's great. But I have it. Damn. Every day. Yeah. So you can do a few things. You can cut back on the caffeine by doing a half calf or even a decaf. Are they drinking Dunkin' Donuts? I don't know what they're drinking. Because you know that that gives me that explosive so diarrhea. Pathetic. If I even smell Dunkin' Donuts, I will spontaneously shit oh my, my pants. We are going to get canceled by New England for Market I'm sorry. We just Listen, came for Market Basket and Dunkin' Donuts. I, I'm, the, I'm the worst. We're done here. I am the fucking worst. And I know I have friends that live all over the world. Oh, yeah. And they're like, I just miss my donkeys. And I was like, miss your fucking donkeys. You're wrong. I would, I remember being like in bumper to bumper or bumper to bumper if you're from Boston, yeah. bumper to bumper traffic, <laughs> squeezing, squeezing my butt Clenching. cheeks together because I drank like one sip of like a freaking Dunkin' Donuts yeah. coffee. I can't do it anymore. I'm I, sure that some of my people, I'm sure, but I don't. Erica runs say. on Dunkin', runs exactly. like because they, they get the fucking runs. Uh -huh. <laughs> did, who is their marketing professionals for that slogan? Yeah, they did not think that through. Nope. Not at all. <laughs> I love it. Dude. So when you hear me saying there's things that you can 
change in your diet. That doesn't mean you can't have it. It just means you have to modify your life a little bit. Yep. Like say, I want to go for a run or go to my Orange Theory class in the morning. I'm going to have my coffee after because yeah. I know it makes me leak or I'm going to you know, take a supplement or something that helps. Who would have thought all this it's shit, so man? Crazy. Yeah. And that's, I, when I came out as a PT, when I first started treating people, my favorite, favorite, favorite thing to treat was back pain. And so many PTs are so like, I hate back pain. I think the thing that makes me like it so much is because it's so complex, there's so many different avenues. Mm-hmm. You'll never be bored with back pain or pelvic floor therapy because... It's also because you love everyone, what you do. That's true. And I think a lot of people are just like, I'm just here to get my fucking yeah. paycheck. And they just say like, do these five exercises. Oh, you didn't get better. I hate back pain because it never gets better. Back pain gets better. You just have to do the right thing. To Hello, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like public enemy number one. Like I do not have back pain. Yeah. Like honestly, if we were doing a podcast, I would be like wriggling in my chair <sighs> Because I would be so uncomfortable. Yeah. I have not really even moved out no. of this position and it doesn't hurt. That's amazing. Even though like I probably have horrible posture I was actually right thinking your posture looks nice. You <laughs> have a nice you. gentle lean. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anything else that you want to kind of touch upon for the listeners out there that maybe we didn't touch upon? I feel like we have touched a lot, which is something that I do. Wildly inappropriate. I I apologize. I love that. Never apologize. Sorry, Patty Letizio. (laughs) Shout out. I love you. (laughs) I love you. You're my home girl. I'm sorry for all of this. I think what I want to... (laughs) Patty's Sam's mom, by the way. Patty is my mom and she is an angel on earth. She is an angel on earth. An angel here on earth. I want people to know that I know I've said this before, but it doesn't have to be this way. If you've heard anything that we've talked about and said, yeah, that's me, but fill in the blank on why you're not going to get it fixed right now. I know this is big for you, Katie. I know that you're like, don't make an excuse. Don't make an excuse. You don't have to live your life this way. Right. Unless you're just a masochistic victim loser. Loser. Which some, listen, some people are. (laughs) <laughs> right? Not, not the fine people listening to us. No, today, no, not at all. <laughs> but there are people out there that they actually, I hate to say this, but I know so many people like this, they actually like to be sick. Yeah. That they get a little mentality. Munchausen. Yeah. You know, because they get a little, they get, that's how they get their attention. Mm-hmm. How about just like get attention for different reasons? Yeah, you can go do something really cool. That, I mean, you could like do nice things for the world. That would be good. Instead of just being like, oh, my back, my yeah. pussy, my crack. And then Sam's like, I fixed you. You got to do the work at home. And you're like, ah, yeah, it's too much work. Better not. Better yeah. just have back pain forever. No, thank you. No, no fucking thank thing. you. I love that message though, because it is true. Like you have to be your own advocate. Mm-hmm. You got to stop making excuses. And I feel like there's so much information. There's so much education in the world just about every topic. I mean, even this, like I know that I didn't know. I knew a lot about pelvic floor because of my background, sure. but I didn't know it in the way that you teach it. Right. Like that it could be all these other things. And it's not because you're, you know, loose as a caboose. It's because you're fucking tight as a tiger because yeah. you've been holding yourself like this and you've been in a constant state of fight and Perfect, flight yeah. your whole life. Right. Yeah. You got to do the work. You have mm-hmm. to do the work, find the right people like you. And then you have to do the work and you have to be your own best advocate and you can't be a, a, a pussy. And take this medical gaslighting as like, mm-hmm. oh, the doctor said that there's nothing wrong with me. So I'm just going to go about my business and live like this for the rest of my it's life. not the answer. And also, if you find a pelvic PT, that's not me. Great. Um, I hope that they work out for you. But if you go to somebody that makes you feel like you're not heard or you're not safe, leave. You don't have to do an exam. You don't have to do anything. I had a patient that said she went somewhere and they locked the door before the exam. And she was like, okay, bye. Not lock the door. Don't take your pants off, guys. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. This is a public service announcement yeah. for everyone out if there. The do not take locked. your pants off when the door is locked. It is not safe. Girl. Yeah. So you want to feel comfy. Who the with fuck locks the door? It's weird. That's so weird. When she told me that, I almost cried. And her husband was a detective. So he, they were both just like, yeah, don't, don't do that. But she didn't. She didn't go. She came to me. But she didn't like sit there and be like, wow, the door is locked. I'm going to like let this guy up all up in me. No, no, she left. So Because she, she's a smart she bitch. She's like, yeah. Most but how many women... Would do it. Would just be like, well, he's the doctor. She's the doctor. They're gods. Yeah. They're not fucking gods. Nope. Nope. And if you get a bad vibe, that's something else that we get kind of gaslit and shoved down as women. Yeah. If you don't, if you get a bad vibe, walk, go find somebody who will take care of you. Those people are out there. They're all over. I have Absolutely. a really good network. Um, And that's another thing. If you want to reach out to me, I do offer telehealth. But if you want to reach out to me and you want somebody in person, I have friends that do this all over the place. That's something about being in the military. You end yeah. up with friends everywhere. That's awesome. Um, so I have friends on both coasts. I have friends up and down the coast that do this and do a really good job of it. So great. So if you need to find somebody to do this in person, 
please reach out and let me help you. So how can people work with you? Because I think it's an absolute gift to work with you. And I know that, like you just said, you were doing it in person, but you also can do telehealth. So how can people reach you? Yeah. So the way that you book with me, whether it's telehealth or in person is on my website, which is eliteptcare.com. Awesome. And there's, we'll put that in the show notes, guys, as well. Perfect. There's buttons all over that site and they take you right to my scheduling page and there's contact information. So you can either shoot me an email at samantha at eliteptcare.com. Love it. Or just click a button and schedule. I do free phone calls. Do a discovery call with me. See if we vibe. Yeah. Because you want to vibe with the person too. Totally. It's not just about them vibing with you. Yeah. It's, you know, we're, this is, we get one life, guys. Like, let's not spend it. <laughs> you ain't fucking, you ain't kidding, sister. <laughs> let's not spend it with people we do not vibe with. <laughs> Absolutely. So they can reach out to you on your website. Mm-hmm. And then what you would do is, first thing you would do is a discovery call to mm-hmm. see if you guys are a good fit and yep. if you could actually help them. Because I'm sure that you have people that come to you and you're like, I don't think this is for you. I think you should go somewhere else. And I don't want you to pay to see me if I'm just going to send you to wherever. So let's make sure that we're going to be a good fit. Yeah. Let's schedule some appointments. And you can follow me on Instagram. Yes. And and we'll also put that in the show notes. But what's your Instagram handle? The Elite Care PT. I always share her stuff too, guys. So she's amazing. And then if people are in the vicinity, like in the um, Southern New Hampshire, New Hampshire, Mm -hmm. like Massachusetts area, they can come right straight to your office. Yep. So I have a physical space in Wyndham right off exit three, super easy to get to. Oh yeah. It's like lickety split right off the highway. Yeah. And super private. I think one thing that bars a lot of people from coming in is they're like, everyone's going to know my business. Yeah. Like I walk in the back and I'm like, hi guys. I am. Yeah. (laughs) I don't even have the admin of the building. Like we'll check you in and let you in. She knows nothing about, like, I do pelvic floor and ortho. Nobody's going to know what you're coming to see right. me for except for you and me. And fucking get over it. Also that. <laughs> <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. It's it's really a cozy, comfy environment. And I'm just so excited to take really good care of you. Yeah. I'm. Uh, this was like such an amazing podcast because I learned a shit ton today, which I'm like, thank you for that. So this is the great part about having a podcast is you actually get to learn such amazing things for people like you that are just experts in their field. I love you so much. You've helped you. me. You've changed my life. You've saved me. I know that like people are like, oh, Katie, don't be so ridiculous. No, I mean it. Like between my fucking little banana foot, <laughs> your banana that you helped, not the banana foot. Like a girl, I was wearing like UGG boots for like three months. I was like, this is not fashion. I cannot live like this when I was going through all the bullshit. And like my foot is 100%. But even more than the banana foot, the pelvic floor thing, who would have thunk it? Who would have thought 20 years of debilitating back pain, medical gaslighting, fucking nerve blocks, chiropractic, like tens of thousands of dollars I've spent. It took like a handful of sessions of you just like putting your little cute, adorable pointer (laughs) finger inside of my vagina (laughs) and just pressing the buttons, making me go deaf, releasing all my childhood trauma. That's it. And now I don't sleep with T-Rex arms and I can bang my man and it's amazing. And I'm not just like, like piddling pee and I don't have to wear a diaper. And I love myself again. I'm so happy. And thank you. That makes me so happy. And I cannot wait for you to help my girls because they need some shit. I'm here to help. Yeah. They need, they need a good swift (laughs) kick in the ass. They need a good poke in their fucking toxic bone. I am here for. I'm so (laughs) excited to help people. Oh my God. This was amazing. Thank you for taking time out of your busy life because you're a mom and you do all the things. So I love you. And I know that my ladies out there in a bitches land are going to love you just as much as I do. So don't forget guys, go to the show notes. All the link will be there to get on the horn with Samantha, do the discovery call, see if you guys will be a good fit and then start your pelvic floor journey to living your most ambitious life. This was so amazing and don't forget to stay ambitious and I will see you next Tuesday. Bye.